So you're here because you want to sell final expense successfully. What I'm gonna do in this video is give you the top six things you absolutely must be prepared for in order to have success selling final expense, as well as what traps and landmines to avoid to make sure you don't become another statistic of failure. So number one on the list here is to decide if you're going to sell face to face or over the phone. So when it comes to final expense sell, telesales, this is really your two options. You can absolutely sell successfully the old fashioned way in person, or you can sell over the phone from the comfort of your own home. Now, which one is going to be better? Well, that totally depends on you as an agent. And what I like to ask agents that are interested in joining the DIG agency, my agency, is where are your strengths? Do you perform better in person with a real life prospect? Or do you do better just simply calling and selling over the phone? Do you like the idea of driving around on the back countries trying to find your prospects? Or would you rather just buy leads and dial, dial, dial all day until someone picks up to sell them over the phone? These are the important questions you must ask yourself. Where does your strengths lie? And also, where do your weaknesses lie? But what I'm seeing right now as far as the business trends go is that about every two out of three applicants to the big agency want to sell over the phone with the remaining one to sell in person. So take your time figuring out, do you prefer to sell over the phone or in person? Because both opportunities are fantastic when it comes to making money and seeing success selling final expense. By the way, another thing I get asked about a lot is can you sell both over the phone and face to face at the same time? And my answer is very simple. No, here's why. It takes a level of competence and focus to be good at even just one thing. And selling final expense over the phone versus selling final expense in person are two entirely different skill sets. And they both are going to require your 100% concentration and effort in order to see success. So my advice is stick with one thing that you have the strengths in and go all in in that direction to give yourself the highest chances of success. The second thing that you need to figure out is how and what products you wanna sell. So the way I like to decide or describe this is are you gonna be a one product agent versus a multi product agent? So let me describe what the differences are and the advantages and the disadvantages. A one product agent typically sells just for one carrier. For example, companies like Lincoln Heritage or senior life insurance, when you sell those companies, you typically are 100% married to that particular company. That means it's a bit easier to sell because you don't have to worry about multiple products in the final expense arena to learn. You just have one product to get good at, one underwriting process to understand, and which greatly simplifies the learning process. But here's the problem when you are a one product agent. You just have one product. In other words, you don't have as many options than if you had if you had multiple carriers. This is important in the final expense business because the likelihood that your client is going to be approached by another agent in the next 90 days, either over the phone or in person, is approaching almost 100%. And you really should sell as if it's going to happen, even though it might not happen, which means you have to pay special attention to what products you select for your client for them to purchase. So one of the risk factors of selling one product is the potential for a lower first year persistency because your business is getting replaced at a higher level of percentage. Number two, you may not as sell as many possible policies because sometimes these pricings for these one carrier strategies are higher than other options. So you may not place business you otherwise would. And number three, sometimes the underwriting doesn't give the best value of coverage to the client that another carrier could get, meaning you may miss out on a sale. What I prefer and recommend to agents to do is sell with a multi-product approach. This solves a lot of the problems that you see with a one product approach, although it does make the business a little bit more complicated and a longer runway to learn. But in exchange for that, what you have is options for your clients, options for a better price, options for optimizing the best value of coverage for your client. And what this allows you to do is keep more of the business that you write, avoid the frustrating chargebacks that happen a lot of the times when agents replace existing coverage, and your client's getting a great value all around. This is how I started in the business as a final expense agent, working multiple products with my final expense prospects, and that allowed me to stay in this business for as long as I have since 2011. So consider what option most appeals to you. Do you just want one product to run with to keep life simple, or do you believe in the multi-product approach to give the best combination of price and value to your clients? Okay, so number three on the list here 
is you gotta pick the right agency to join. In the insurance business, especially the final expense business, guess what? A lot of the organizations you're looking at are multi-level marketing opportunities. This means that they recruit agents to recruit agents. They offer really poor commissions and even poor quality of leads. And what this ends up resulting in is a high level of failure, sometimes 95% or greater for these organizations that just recruit anybody with a pulse. What should you do instead? Look for an agency that is focused on training you how to sell successfully as opposed to focusing on how you can recruit people to recruit. The best advice I can give you is that any agency that you're looking at joining is ask for three references. Three references of actual agents who work in that agency. That'll give you some honest perspective as to what it's like to be an actual agent with the agency from the standpoint of somebody who's just like you. Whereas somebody like myself who owns an agency, guess what, we're putting our best foot forward. And that means you're just gonna hear really the best of the best stuff, but not all the actual real life day-to-day -day stuff that happens as an insurance agent and what the relationship is like from that agent with the agency. And if you don't get references from an agency, or worse, the agency pushes back on the references, it's likely that's not a good agency to join and you should probably consider another option. So you've picked how you wanted to sell, either face-to-face -face or over the phone. You've decided on if you're gonna sell one product or multiple products and you've found a good agency that's going to focus on training you to be successful. The next thing you need to be worried about is the actual lead program that the agency offers. So pro tip to all of y'all who are first timers in the insurance business, which is most of you, leads are the lifeblood of your success in this business. In other words, you can have a great agency and sell exactly how you wanna sell with the right product lineup that you want, but guys, if you don't have people to see, it doesn't matter how great you are, you're likely going to fail out. So leads matter. And a couple of things I wanna hit on here as far as what kind of leads work best so you can avoid wasting money and time on failed lead programs. So if you're wanting to sell face-to-face, -face, I like direct mail, and we're gonna just call it DM for short. Direct mail is just what you think it is. Postcards mailed to your prospects, they send it back expressing interest, and then as a face-to-face -face agent, you either drop in unannounced knocking on the door to get in, or call to set an appointment to see them in person. Direct mail has gone up in price over time, but they are consistently a high quality source of leads that allow face-to-face -face agents, really I think, to maximize the higher intent opportunities out there with the best sale opportunities as well for those face-to-face -face agents. Now for telesales, I recommend either Facebook leads, and we'll just call it a kind of a Facebook, right? Uh, and then also TV leads. So these are the two options I would recommend for telesales agents. For example, in my agency, the Dig Agency, we have a, a Facebook-based lead program called Alpha Leads Program that gives you leads at cost that you don't have to pay a markup for. So instead of paying $15 plus a lead, you're paying five to $10 a lead, saving hundreds if not thousands of dollars. And we also have opportunities for our agents to get them for free at no cost too. So Facebook leads are an excellent source of leads. Also, you can get TV leads as well. There are some vendors that are really good that offer TV leads, but a lot of the TV leads out there are very high priced. Some of the quality has dropped because there's a lot more players in the TV lead space than final expense. And for a lot of agents, the idea of spending $70 a lead instead of maybe like five, six or $7 a lead is hard to swallow. So it tends to be more of the advanced agents who have the spend that go into the TV lead programs as opposed to those agents getting started who are new who feel more comfortable with something where they're paying five, six, seven dollars a lead or not paying anything at all because like in our program, the leads are free. Make sure you avoid data leads and live transfers as a final expense agent. The FCC has released guidelines saying that these forms of leads, data leads and live transfers are going to be illegal by the end of 2024. There are organizations out there selling live transfers and data leads that are big time three letter IMOs out there. You probably have seen their content and you wanna stay away from those because the quality of those leads are absolutely terrible. It is actually a cash cow for the company to sell those even though the quality sucks because they're monetizing you, turning you into a form of profit even though you can't actually sell anything off them because the quality is so bad. So just keep that in mind. So now that you've honed in a lead program for selling final expense successfully, the next thing you need to do is figure out how to hone in and work on your activity metrics. So we all wanna make a lot of money and sell a lot of policies, right? 
but policies and money is the output or is a derivative of the inputs that really are going to make or break your success in the business. In other words, it is better as a new agent to not focus on the money and policies, but on the required activity to be successful that over time will average out to the money and the policies that you get. This is very important to think about. You have to think about the inputs, not the outputs in other words. And I'm gonna give you some guidelines and metrics, whether you're face-to-face -face or telesales, so that you can kind of set yourself up initially for what kind of work do I have to do to be successful to make the money I want. So if we're gonna start first with face-to-face, -face, then go to telesales. So the first thing with face-to-face, -face, your goal as a full-time agent should be 15 presentations a week. 15 presentations completed a week for a good agent, not a great agent, not a bad agent, should result in seven, six to nine sales. It just really is gonna depend on how good you are in the home and what you do with the leads when you have them. And these would be direct mail leads or Facebook leads. We didn't talk about that previously, but there are some good Facebook leads for face-to-face. -face. And then getting 15 presentations out of them should result in the six to nine sales that you need to see consistent success selling in person. Now, what about telesales? Let's talk a little bit about that. If you're wanting to sell telesales, my recommendation is you're probably going to have to give somewhere uh, conversation-wise full presentations of about double that, which is about 30 presentations, because the close rate on these typically is lower selling over the phone than it is in person. Just a matter of how the business is. They can't see you. There's a little more skepticism. People put you off a little bit more on the phone than they do in person. And so to get 30 presentations, again, I wanna see probably about 25% of those convert on the low side, a third on the high side. So again, six to nine, six to 10 is kind of what we're looking at. But then as far as how many leads we need to get, we need to see about 100 to 125 Facebook leads. And then for TV leads, I'm gonna say probably somewhere in the range of, again, 30 TV leads is what I would be thinking. Up here for direct mail, uh, conservatively 30 DM leads a week. Just put that in so you can see the difference there as well. So this is what you need to think about uh, purely on a presentation lead base type of strategy if you wanna get this kind of results. So some last pieces of advice here as we wrap up the program. I promised you some talk on what uh, hangups and landmines to avoid when it comes to selling final expense successfully. And the three things I wanna hit on here, we've kind of talked about them a little bit, but we wanna make sure that you guys totally understand that, is the MLM stuff, just avoid it entirely, okay? The MLM agencies all out there are the biggest organizations. They sound the best, most likely than say something like my organization does, but they know how to make and present this as being the best thing since sliced bread. My advice is just to stay away from these type of companies because many of them just wanna recruit you, sell you a bunch of garbage leads, make money off of you, work in some garbage stuff that just it results in a very low success rate. And more agents become understandably cold shoulder to this business because of this kind of mentality and strategy out there. Just avoid it. If it smells like a cult, it probably is a cult, which means it probably is an MLM. Just to kind of give you some advice on well, what is an MLM, usually it's a three letter IMO. You know, they talk more about blue sky and how much money you're gonna make versus the technicalities of the business. And those are the surefire signs that uh, you need to avoid and also do your due diligence, do some Google searches. There's a lot of content out there about all the different IMOs out there to kind of give you some ideas if this company is legit or not. Number two on the list here is bad agent terms. So let me describe what I mean here. You as a new agent are ignorant, and I mean that respectfully, um, of what the legalese of the business is. And there's a couple of things that you need to consider before you jump in. So you can decide if the terms are good for you or not. Uh, number one here is uh, LOA setups. Now, not all LOAs are bad, but line of authority means that you don't own your own business. It's the company's business and the company is going to pay you commission. Whereas like at the dig agency with our programs, the carriers pay you directly so that there's no confusion what you're going to get paid. So a lot of times these programs are masked as if, hey, you're not gonna have a chargeback, but you're also not gonna get paid nearly as much because there's no such thing as a free lunch. And a chargeback is when somebody lapses their policy and you owe a portion of your commission back. It sounds good not to have that, but in order for it to make sense for the company, they're gonna basically lower your commission down further. And a lot of these programs, they'll pay per policy, they won't pay commission. And if you end up being a good agent, you're ha hamstrung on commission so much that if you just do the math, or maybe you sell 40 policies and make six to eight grand a month, what sounds good, 
But if you're doing 40 policies at full commission, you might be at double of that commission, right? And you gotta ask yourself, is it really worth taking such a huge haircut? So I would advise in most cases, most agents to stay away from an LOA model, especially the successful ones. The other thing you need to be concerned about is releases. This kind of goes right back up here to the MLM stuff. The MLMs don't release you. What is a release? A release means that you can move your carrier association to whomever you please if you feel that the organization that you first joined didn't deliver on its promises. It is the plan B escape hatch when the organization frankly lies or deceives and you wanna retain the connections to the carriers that you've made and you've begun to feel comfortable with and move them to another agency. My agency releases, we've always historically released, but again, a lot of the MLMs out there, the three letter IMOs, they do not release. And that means they don't stand by their promises and you gotta watch out because of that. And the last thing on the la list here, really important, again, worth uh, reiterating here, is crappy leads. Guys, there's a big lead issue in this business. Aged leads, old leads that are years old, data leads that aren't really even leads, frankly, are being pushed on agents to sell them something to make the company money uh, at your expense and at the profit of the company. Instead, as far as final expense agents should go, deal with leads that are fresh, deal with leads that are exclusive. That's what all the best agents work, so why shouldn't you? Don't go cheap on leads. Avoid, really, it just it kind of always comes back to this. The MLMs push this stuff. And if you just avoid the three letter IMOs, in many cases, you avoid the bad agent uh, terms, you avoid the crap leads, and you give yourself so much higher chance of success selling final expense. So what did you think about this video? Do you like the content in it? Do you feel that it's helped you give perspective on selling final expense successfully? If you feel that way, leave a comment below. Also consider thumbing up the video, subscribing to my channel as well. And as I've referenced to this video, I do recruit agents to sell final expense successfully, both in person and over the phone. We have free lead programs specifically designed to help you if you don't wanna buy leads, or if you wanna buy leads and have a higher commission, you can do that too as well, both for face-to-face -face and telesales. We have world-class training. We have a proprietary lead program, a CRM that is awesome at helping you close more business. And if you wanna learn more about it, just go to davidduford.com, click the FAQ link at the top, then you can apply if you'd like to or join one of our daily Q&A calls to learn more. And thanks for watching.